And in this video tutorial, we are going to be typing our very first JavaScript program. That is the hello world program because all the programmers begin with the hello world program, right? It's a convention being followed. So yes, before starting off with actually typing the code, I want to talk about the softwares that we are going to be using. And we are only going to be needing two different types of softwares. And one is actually the text editor, wherein we are going to be typing the code. And the other one is actually a basic browser. Yes, we only need these two things and we do not need a separate integrated development environment, which sort of like Android Studio or Visual Studio, nothing that heavy. We just need a basic text editor. So even your system doesn't need to be very high end to run all these basic text editors. So the text editor that I'm going to be using is Visual Studio Code by Microsoft. So let me just show you that text editor. So if you open up your browser and just type in Visual Studio Code, you'll be redirected to this website. And this is that text editor. It is free to download. It's not charged or it is not paid. So you can just download it. You can see free open source runs everywhere. It's a basic text editor, just like notepad plus plus or sublime text. And I highly recommend that even you use this because I did some research and turns out that visual studio code is highly preferred for especially for JavaScript. So I'm going to be using visual studio code. Even I am new to this text editor. I've been using sublime text and notepad plus plus for I don't know how many years, but then yeah, we, I've been using Visual Studio Code for quite a long time now, and I think it's pretty good. So I would recommend Visual Studio Code for you. The next thing is we require a browser and we already have it. I have Google Chrome. You can use Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. I don't know how the Internet Explorer handles JavaScript. That is the Edge Explorer. I've never used it. So yeah, my recommendations would be Visual Studio Code for text editor and Google Chrome for the web browser. So the reason why we don't need any kind of other ID is because these browsers that is the latest Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox or any other latest browser actually comes along with the JavaScript engine that runs the JavaScript code in house itself, you know, so JavaScript is interpreted and basically the part that runs or executes the JavaScript is already embedded in these browsers. And also most of these browsers that is the latest browsers have JavaScript by default enabled. So in your case, if it is not enabled or if it's not working, especially for the Chrome, you just go to the settings search for JavaScript. You can see in the content settings over here, JavaScript is allowed. So if it's off, you can just go to this and you can just turn it on. So yeah, this was just about the two different softwares that we are going to be needing. Let's start off with our code now. So I'm going to open Visual Studio Code. Okay. So on the right hand side, I have my Visual Studio Code text editor already open. Also, the reason why we are using a specific text editor is because there are a lot of features when it comes to these text editors, which are specifically for programming, they have something called as syntax highlighting. We have indentation, we have debugging, we have IntelliSense and whatnot. You know, you can use your basic notepad, but that is not going to be as powerful as this. There are a lot of features apart from what I just mentioned. So I highly recommend you use a specific text editor. You can go ahead with sublime as well. Okay. So as you can see on the right hand side, I have a basic structure of an HTML document. I've named it default.html. You can pause the video and you can type this code. I would highly recommend that you type it out. If you are a beginner, please do not just read the code. If you are a beginner, the best way to learn programming is to actually type it out yourself. And of course I will be sharing all these code files with you guys. So you can check out the video description for all these files, but I would recommend that you don't copy and paste the code. I would recommend that you type along with me. And yeah, so this is a basic structure of an HTML document, which is named as default.html. Let me just show you where I've saved it. So here's the folder that I've saved it. I'm just going to double click it and run it. And there you go. You can see my title is running over here. And as of now, there is nothing inside this. So that's why it's showing nothing. It's totally blank document. So this is just the bare bone structure. And now we are going to start off with our JavaScript code. So there are two different ways in which JavaScript can be included in your HTML. So either you can embed it right inside your HTML document that is inside this default.html using the script tag. So this is what the script tag is for, or you can have a separate JavaScript file with an extension of .js, and then you can include that JavaScript file in this default.html again, using the script tag itself. So we'll start off with method number one, that is embedding the JavaScript in your default.html file itself. So inside the script tag, you just have to mention the type. So I'm going to say type and you can see equal to and double quotes already came in typed along with it. So that's the power of this text editor. And here we just have to mention what type of code are we going to write inside the script tag. So since it is JavaScript, there is a default value for this. So we have to say text slash JavaScript. This is the default value whenever you want to include a JavaScript. Now, even if you don't include this entire attribute, you are good to go. And I think your JavaScript would work, but it is always 
better to actually mention it. This type is an attribute of the script tag. Okay. So I hope you have a basic idea of HTML. Now inside this, we're going to say document dot write in the opening and closing round brackets. That is parentheses inside the double quotes. I'm going to say hello world. Now, don't worry. I'll be explaining to you what is document, what is this dot write and so on and so forth. But right now, just type along with me, give a semicolon, save this and just refresh your web page. And there you go. You can see we got hello world, which means our JavaScript worked perfectly fine. So talking about this document dot write line. So this document is basically an object that represents the entire document. So we've already seen what is the document object model in the previous video, right? So this document object is a by default object given in JavaScript, which represents that entire document. And then this dot write or this write is a function or a method, which basically prints this message on the browser. So you can directly print a HTML tag as well. So inside the double quotes, if I say H1 and H1 close. So this is the heading tag. So I'm going to say heading one. If I save this and if I refresh this, the entire heading tag is also printed, right? So heading tag has its own style. That is, it is a bit bolder and it is larger in size compared to the normal paragraph text. So you can completely print entire HTML tags also using JavaScript. Okay. So this was method number one that is including or embedding the entire JavaScript in your HTML document itself. Now you can include this script anywhere on this page. It does not have to be inside the head. You can include it inside the body and it will still run. If I save this, I'll just change the name just for verification. If I refresh, you can see heading tag two. that is heading two. So you can include it at the bottom outside the body. You can include it outside the HTML. If I keep it at the end and change the heading to heading three, save it and run this. You can see it is working perfectly fine. Now, typically when the JavaScript code is of a lot of lines. So let's say you have hundred lines of code. Typically then the JavaScript is included at the bottom of the file because whenever your document is loaded, whenever you run this default.html and the browser renders it, it takes a lot of time if JavaScript is at the top, right? Because it goes line by line. So it has to load all the JavaScript code first and then render the all divisions, all the sections and all the parts of the HTML tags. So that's why typically when the code is large and when it's going to be performing a lot of activities, it is included at the bottom, but in our case, we can include it anywhere initially because our JavaScript initially is going to be very small and it won't have an effect on the performance. Okay. So method number one done. Method number two is to have a separate JavaScript file, as I mentioned. So I'm just going to double tap over here and create a new file or you can click on this or you can say file new file. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this entire line or in fact, cut this line, go over here, paste it and I'm going to save it as demo. And I'm going to save it as a JavaScript file. Okay. So in the same folder where we have our default.html, I'm going to save it as demo and the type as JavaScript. Make sure you select JavaScript. If I hit save, it's saved as a JavaScript file. You can see the code is highlighted. I'm just going to cut this and put it in the head. So if you go to the file explorer, you can see that we have our default.html and we have our separate demo.js file. Now to include this demo.js file in the default.html file, we have to again use the script tag itself, but we have to use another attribute, which is known as SRC or source hit enter. And you can see equal to and double quotes already there. And now we have to navigate where the JS file is. So since it is in the same folder, we just have to give the name of the file that is demo dot JS. And these have dot JS as extensions. If I hit save, let me just go in the dot JS and let me make some changes. So I'm going to say external file, save the JS file come back to the HTML file. And now let's try to refresh our browser. And there you go. You can see external file, which means this code worked perfectly fine. We included the external demo.js file into our HTML document. Okay. So these are the two different ways in which JavaScript can be used in our HTML code. And this was a very basic program wherein we just printed some value on the browser. So in the upcoming videos, we'll see a lot of more practicals. And with that being said, I'm just going to wrap this video over here. I just wanted to show you a basic JavaScript code, how it runs on the browser and the different softwares that we're going to use. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you have an idea about how we are going to be using JavaScript to, to different ways in which JavaScript can be used in our HTML document. In further videos, we'll start off with the proper syntax of JavaScript and understanding the fundamentals. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how this video was. Do subscribe on this channel if you haven't yet subscribed and share it with your friends as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.